Poor sleep makes you 5.4 times more likely to have a car crash, nearly three times more likely to catch a cold, and even increases your chance of a heart attack. But today, using the latest science and clinical guidelines, poor sleep is so easy to fix. So in this video, I'm going to share with you the simple system that I, as well as my patients at the clinic, now use to get the sleep we need and consistently wake up feeling rested. Plus, we'll look at some popular sleep supplements and whether they actually help. Let's start with the change that's made the biggest difference for me. It's surprising because it's something that we don't usually think about when trying to sleep better. This is remarkable since research has shown that getting this right can have an even bigger positive impact on your sleep than medication. The change is all about mindset, and maybe you can relate. When I used to go to bed, my mind was full of thoughts about the day and things that I needed to do. I felt stressed out and worried that I couldn't fall asleep. My stress just kept growing, and I stayed awake for hours. And I'm not alone in this. Many people who have trouble sleeping think this way and it can lead to insomnia. So what can we do about it? Well, psychologists have created a way to help people stop these worrying thoughts. It's called cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. So how does it work? Well, in therapy, you learn to spot the thoughts that make you anxious before bed and change how you approach them. For instance, if you find yourself thinking, I'm never going to fall asleep and tomorrow is just going to be ruined, you learn to challenge that thought and you say to yourself, it's not true that I'm not going to fall asleep, it might just take a bit longer. And being a bit more tired tomorrow, it doesn't mean that the day has to be ruined. It sounds so simple, but it's about changing your identity. If you tell yourself over and over again that you're bad at sleeping, that it takes you ages to fall asleep, guess what? You will struggle to fall asleep and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Instead, I found that telling myself things like I'm a good sleeper, I can get to sleep fast, over time that changed my approach to sleep and gradually I identified as someone that does have great sleep and that itself became the self-fulfilling prophecy. It helped me replace anxious thoughts and gave me a positive outlook and calmed my mind. As a result, my sleep got so much better and there's plenty of research showing that cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia works. One meta-analysis, which is a study that combines the results from multiple different studies, concluded this approach works. It found that on average, it helped people reduce the time it took to fall asleep and how long they tended to lie awake at night from 60 minutes all the way down to 30 minutes. That's a 50% reduction. And what's more, these changes last. It brings about long-term improvements in sleep. And digging into this further, I was surprised to find out the power our mindset can have, even if we didn't sleep well the night before. One study found that people did better in mental tasks when they thought they had slept more, even if they actually hadn't. So mindset is huge. I always encourage my patients to explore their thinking because it's so easy to forget this key factor while trying to focus on everything else. That's the first important step, and after that everything else becomes easy, and the next 10 steps are super simple to follow. When we think about sleep, getting good sleep doesn't start an hour or two before bed. It starts at the very beginning of the day. So starting from the time that I wake up, here is the 10 step protocol I use. I make sure to get up at the same time every day. The body loves to be in a rhythm. So even on weekends, I get up at the same time every day. This consistency is so important for our sleep that recent research has even found that it's a better predictor for some health outcomes than how long you sleep. Number two on the list is soak up some sun. Get at least 30 minutes of natural sunlight every day, especially in the morning. Researchers think that early morning sunlight helps to regulate our circadian rhythm, which is our internal clocks that tell us when it's day and when it's time to sleep. Multiple studies such as this one show that those who were in the sun in the morning slept better that night. Number three is to have your coffee early. So many of us, including me, love our cup of morning coffee Research supports that we should keep it a long way from our bedtime so that it doesn't interfere with our sleep. One study found that we should aim for at least 8.8 .8 hours between drinking coffee and bedtime. Personally, I take a stronger approach. Caffeine stays in our body for a really long time, so I make sure to have my last cup of coffee within 4 hours of waking up. Some people say that caffeine doesn't affect their sleep, that they can still fall asleep fast even if they have a cup of coffee in the evening. And while you might still be able to fall asleep, the quality of your sleep will be worse and you won't wake up as rested as you could be. Also, there's been a trend on social media to avoid caffeine within the first 30 minutes of waking up. And look, you can do that if you want to, but looking through the research, there's no proven advantage of doing that. Number four is to eat a good breakfast. 
Thankfully, in recent times, the war against breakfast is ending. Many people, for example, who practice the 16-8 intermittent fast protocol, they skip breakfast to do their fast and they eat a large late dinner. Now, not only is this bad for sleep quality, but it doesn't work in well with our circadian rhythms. We are more insulin sensitive in the morning, so it makes sense to get most of our calories in the morning rather than the evening. And personally, I make sure to have a high protein, high fiber breakfast. And we have good evidence that by eating breakfast, we improve our sleep quality. Number five is exercise. A large meta-analysis found a clear connection. Physical activity during the day improves our sleep quality at night. Now, you don't have to run marathons either. Even when I'm busy, I can stay active by including what's called exercise snacks. These are short bursts of exercise throughout the day, like push-ups or sit-ups or other bodyweight exercises. So for example, when I'm at the clinic, during a quick 15-minute paperwork break, I'll fit in some exercise. These snacks can add up to make a massive difference to our health. And I know that it's much easier said than done, but even if we've had a terrible night's sleep, we must power through and exercise during the day. Otherwise, it's easy to get into a downward spiral where we don't sleep well therefore we don't exercise which makes our sleep even worse we have to avoid that spiral number six is to avoid naps just stay away from them number seven no alcohol so even one drink can cause disruptions in our sleep quality but this isn't to say don't socialize social bonds are critical for our mental health and therefore our long-term health so when i catch up with friends i just make sure to drink something non-alcoholic Number eight, an early light dinner, and we've already touched on this. Having a late heavy meal right before bed can make it tough to fall asleep, and it significantly impacts our sleep quality. And though the research is mixed on this, some studies have backed up the concept that if we eat dinner closer to bed, it's connected to taking longer to fall asleep. And it's quite an interesting self-experiment to run. If you've got a smartwatch, see what happens to your heart rate as you sleep if you have a large late dinner compared to an early light dinner. So with an early light dinner, overnight you'll notice that your heart rate is significantly lower. Number nine, sleep rituals. As bedtime gets closer, I have some habits that help me to relax and to get ready for sleep. There are lots of ways to do this. For example, some people like to do stretching or breathing exercises for five minutes before bed. Others take a hot bath or shower one to two hours before bed. It raises our body temperature, and then when we get out of the bath or shower, our body temperature plummets, and that change causes us to feel sleepy. I also make sure to stay away from screens in the last hour before bed. With everyone using smartphones before sleeping, lots of research shows that this can significantly impact our sleep. One recent meta-analysis noted that screen time before bed is consistently associated with negative sleep health outcomes. So get that phone out of the bedroom. If you need a phone for an alarm, buy an alarm clock or use a smartwatch. Number 10, a sleep-friendly environment. For example, sound is so important. A white noise machine can help you relax and block out the unwanted noises. If you have pets, they might wake you up at night, so it's best to have them out of the bedroom. Of course, a comfortable bed and pillows are super important as well. Pillows should be replaced every two years and mattresses should be changed about every nine years. So if yours is older than that, it might be time for new ones. And remember what we talked about in step nine, screens before bed aren't helpful. So keep the phone out of the bedroom so that you're not tempted to use it. I've followed these rules and they've made a massive difference for me. But there's one thing I haven't talked about yet. Supplements. Do any supplements really help us sleep better? Well, the most popular option is melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone naturally produced in our brains as we're exposed to darkness. One of its roles is to help regulate our circadian rhythm. For some people who struggle to fall asleep, their melatonin levels, they don't start to rise at the correct time. So in a meta-analysis of 14 studies, melatonin supplements were shown to reduce the time it took to fall asleep. And a separate review showed that melatonin supplements do improve sleep quality, but there are two important points to consider when supplementing with melatonin. The first is that there doesn't appear to be any additional benefit from taking higher doses compared to lower doses. And the second is that melatonin should be taken in the early evening, at least one to two hours before trying to fall asleep. This is because melatonin works as a chronobiotic agent, meaning that it helps to synchronize the body's sleep-wake cycle. So what's the ideal dose? Well, unfortunately, many melatonin supplements are anything but low doses. You can buy even up to 10 milligrams over the counter. Yet we have no idea the long-term consequences of taking such high doses of melatonin. 
all of the current studies that we have at the moment are short term. Plus, it's highly unlikely that there are any additional benefits from taking such high doses. The body produces between 10 to 80 micrograms of melatonin per hour at night, so up to 640 micrograms for an 8-hour sleep. So personally, I supplement with 300 micrograms, and I take it 1 to 2 hours before I want to fall asleep. Now let's have a look at one other famous supplement promoted for its effects on sleep, magnesium. Overall, the evidence is mixed. Some studies suggest a benefit, while others show no effect whatsoever. But its effects on sleep weren't the reasons why I included magnesium in microvitamin, in the form of magnesium taurate. Instead, I wanted to address a common problem. There's a massive mistake that 52% of us make when it comes to magnesium, which needlessly puts us at higher risks of heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, and weakened bones. And I explain exactly what's going on in the next video here.